Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston and welcome to lecture 9 of Advanced Linear Algebra, which is all about linear transformations. So in today's lecture, we're just going to go over the basics of linear transformations, so their definition and some basic examples, and then we'll look at what you can do with linear transformations throughout the rest of this week and into next week as well. Okay, so here's the idea. The idea is we would like to consider not just uh, not just vector spaces sort of in isolation, but we would like to do things to them. In other words, we would like to apply functions to them. Okay, but in linear algebra, you know, we, we want functions that sort of behave well on the on the vector spaces. You know, there's tons and tons of functions out there, and most of them just screw things up and make things look really chaotic. We want to consider functions that behave well. In particular, we want them to sort of respect the vector space operations that we have. We want them to respect vector addition and scalar multiplication. All right, so that's where this definition comes from. They're functions acting on vector spaces, but they're not all functions. They're just functions that sort of behave well. So we can do things with them. We can actually prove things about them. They're sort of, they're sort of nice enough to actually work with. All right, so here's the setup. What is a linear transformation? Well, it's a function between two vector spaces, right? So a linear transformation T, it's a function that sends vectors in one vector space to vectors in another vector space. Maybe the same one, but it could be different. And it's got to have two properties for it to actually be a linear transformation rather than just any old function. The first property is if you sum up two vectors and then apply the linear transformation, the function, you get the same thing as if you apply that function and then add them up. In other words, it sort of behaves well with vector addition. Right? And the other property is sort of the same thing except for scalar multiplication. If you multiply a vector by a scalar and then apply the function, you get the same thing as if you apply the function and then multiply by the scalar. Okay, so that's maybe a little bit abstract and, you know, still seems like why those two properties, but let's go through sort of the motivating example here. Let's see why linear transformations are really a generalization, of something that you've already seen before in introductory linear algebra. Okay, and the generalization, that the, the thing that you've already seen in introductory linear transformation is matrices. Like linear transformations are just the generalization of matrices. And here's how that works. Suppose that you've got some matrix here. It's an M by N matrix. All right, what you can do is once you're given that matrix, you can define a function between two vector spaces, and this time the vector spaces are Rn and Rm. Okay, we can think of that matrix as sending n dimensional vectors to m dimensional vectors in this way. You define some function that we're going to call Ta, and the way that it works on vectors is it just multiplies that vector by the matrix. And because of the size of the matrix here, it sends n dimensional vectors to m dimensional vectors. Okay, and it turns out that this is a linear transformation. This function here is a linear transformation. Sorry for the typo here. That'll be corrected in the uploaded notes. Okay, so it's a linear transformation. And the way that you check that is you just check the two defining properties of linear transformations. You check these properties A and B up here. All right, so let's do that. Okay, and to do that, we just use properties of matrices that we already know from the previous course, okay? So the first property that we want to check is we want to see that, hey, if we're applying this function here to the sum of two vectors, I'd better get the same thing as if I apply that function to one vector plus that function applied to the other vector, okay? So how's that work? Well, by definition, this function applied to V plus W is just A times V plus W. All right, and one of the properties of matrices that we know is that A times V plus W is A times V plus a times w. We call that distributivity in the previous course because it's sort of multiplication distributing over addition. Okay, and then a times v, well, that's just ta of v, and a times w, that's just ta of w. We're just using the definition of this function from back here, okay? And that's exactly what we want. So yay, property a holds. Property b is almost identical, right? It's just, hey, what is this function applied to c, c times v? Well, it's just A times C times V. And then again, properties of matrix multiplication, I can pull that scalar C out in front. It doesn't matter if I do matrix times scalar times vector or scalar times matrix times vector. You get the same thing either way. So this is the same as C times A times V, which is C times TA of V, right? AV here is TA of V. All right, so that's all that we needed to check. I mean, most of these equalities here are nothing more than changes of notation, really. Like four of these equalities here are just making this substitution of notation. It's just function applied to vector is matrix times vector. There's actually not much math really going on there. These two central equalities are really the mathematical steps where something had to be shown, but we showed it in the previous course. All right, so yeah, matrices, matrices are linear transformations. They're functions that act on vectors 
and they act sort of in a way that respects our vector space operations. But there are lots of other interesting linear transformations out there too. So for example, is the function which takes an m by n matrix and spits out an n by m matrix, is the function that transposes a matrix, is that a linear transformation? Okay, that's going to turn out that yeah, it is. Okay, so how do we check this? Again, you have two properties that you got to check. Okay, linear transformations, they depend on two things. The first thing is, well, if I apply the linear transformation to the sum, do I get the same thing as if I apply the linear transformation to them individually and then add them up? In other words, in this case, that means is A plus B transpose the same as A transpose plus B transpose? And yeah, it is. Okay, again, you learned this in the previous course, okay? To prove this property, you just work entry-wise, right? Think about what the transpose does. All it does is sort of shift the positions of the entries in the matrix, okay? So if you add them up and then shift the positions, you get the exact same thing as if you shift the positions of both of them and add them up because addition's just entry-wise. There's sort of nothing weird going on there, okay? Property B is very similar. If you scale or multiply by C and then transpose, do you get the same thing as if you transpose and then scale or multiply by C? Yeah, you do, okay? Just work entry-wise. You can work entry-wise and prove that straightforwardly. Again, we saw that in the previous course. So the upshot is, yes, the transposition function, the function that spits out the transpose of a matrix, that is a linear transformation. All right. Well, if we go to a slightly more exotic function, what about the determinant function? Okay, so if, you, if you've forgotten what the determinant is, I'll try to remind you of just the basics as we go through this. But the determinant, remember that's, that's, that's the function that, you know, it takes in a matrix, and then we had like these complicated, ugly formulas for it. But what it showed you was it told you sort of the signed volume of that linear transformation of that matrix. It sort of told you, hey, if you feed the unit cube into this matrix, how big is it when it comes out, okay? It's a measure of the size of the matrix, basically. All right, so this function, the determinant, um, is that a linear transformation? Okay, so let's check it, okay? So we gotta check two properties again. Property A, is it true that the determinants of A plus B equals the determinant of A plus the determinant of B? Okay, and you could spend all day trying to prove that, but maybe the fact that we did not see that as a property of the determinant back in linear algebra one, maybe that signals that there's something's wrong here. Okay, that property is not true. This property is not true. The determinant is not additive, okay? And to show that it's not true, you just need a single counterexample. So here's one particularly nice counterexample. What if A and B are both the identity matrix? So it has ones on the diagonal and zeros off diagonal. All right, well, then determinant of the sum of them is determinant of i plus i, which is determinant of 2i. And then again, remember, so here we've got the determinant of the matrix that has twos on its diagonal and zeros elsewhere. And we had a theorem in the previous course that said if you have a diagonal matrix, or even more generally, if you have a triangular matrix, the determinant is just the product of those diagonal entries. So here you've just got n twos going down that diagonal. So the determinant is the product of all of them, which is 2 to the power n. All right, great. So that's what determinant of A plus B is. But on the other hand, the right-hand side is determinant of identity plus determinant of identity. And the identity matrices each have det determinant equal to 1. So you add them up, you just get 2 instead of 2 to the power n. So these quantities here are not the same. So this property fails, so it's not a linear transformation. Okay, and maybe two quick notes. I did not check property B anywhere, right? We only checked property A. And that's because we already showed that property A doesn't even hold, so we already know it can't be a linear transformation. As long as at least one of those two properties fails, it's not a linear transformation. So once one of them fails, you don't need to check the other one. The other thing is, hey, we've got 2 and 2 to the power n. Well, there's one case where those numbers are the same, and that's when n equals 1. And well, yeah, I mean, if the determinant of a 1 by 1 matrix is just that number itself, that is a linear transformation. The determinant on 1 by 1 matrices is just the identity function. So it's not a linear transformation for two by two or larger matrices, but it sort of trivially is for one by one matrices. We don't ever really consider one by one matrices anyway. We just call them scalars. Okay, so determinant, not a linear transformation. Let's go to one more kind of exotic example of something that is a linear transformation. So is the di differentiation map. So D here is the function that takes the derivative of a function, okay? Is that a linear transformation? Okay, and just a little note on the term, the notation here, this curly D here, that's the vector space of all differentiable functions. It's the vector space of all functions that have a derivative, 
okay? And then f here is again, just the vector space of all functions. All right, so d sends a differentiable function to just some function, all right? And this function acts by taking the derivative. Is that a linear transformation? So again, we gotta check the two properties. Is the derivative of f plus g equal to the derivative of f plus the derivative of g? Yes, you learned that in first year calculus. Is the derivative of scalar times f the same as scalar times the derivative of f? Yes, you learned that in first year calculus, okay? And all of these intermediate steps are just converting things back to notation that maybe you're a little bit more used to from first year calculus, okay? Um, but yeah, so both of those properties hold. And so yeah, D is a linear transformation. The derivative is a linear transformation. All right, so that's really nice. That's gonna be a nice example that's gonna do some neat stuff as we go through the next week or two. All right, basically what that's gonna let us do is it's gonna let us do linear algebra stuff to solve calculus problems. Okay, and before we finish off for the, today, uh, just a couple of quick notes. Um, so one thing to keep in mind is that linear transformations, they can act on multiple different vector spaces, okay? So it, it depends a little bit on what vector spaces you're using. So here I said, uh, you know, consider the derivative uh, linear transformation acting on the vector space D and mapping into the vector space F. Well, I. You know, I, I could also consider that linear transformation D that takes the derivative, I could consider it as acting on say P3 and mapping into, into P2, right? Because um, if you take the derivative of a degree less than or equal to three polynomial, you get a degree less than or equal to two polynomial. And that's okay too. So I can consider D acting on different vector spaces depending on what my intention is with that linear transformation. All right. One other thing that's really useful to keep in mind, this really helps when checking that something is a linear transformation. Every linear transformation has to satisfy t of zero equals zero, okay? So if it doesn't satisfy that, you know right away it's not a linear transformation, okay? And the reason that this is true um, is, well, if you plug the zero vector into a linear transformation, we used this sort of trick a, a couple weeks ago, actually. The zero vector can be written as zero times any other vector of our choosing, so zero times v. Okay, but zero, I mean, that's a scalar, so I can pull it out of the linear transformation, so I would get zero times t of v, and then again, zero times anything, that's just the zero vector. Okay, so t of zero has to equal the zero vector if t is a linear transformation. All right, so that gives you a really quick and easy way to check certain things. Okay, and this sort of corresponds to the fact that, uh, I mean, back in Rn, when we were working with matrices acting on Rn, whenever you multiplied by a matrix on Rn, it always left the origin alone. It left the zero vector alone. Okay, so the same thing has to be true, you know, with general linear transformations. Okay, and then there are a couple of commonly occurring linear transformations that we're just gonna quickly give names to. The zero transformation is the one that sends every vector to the zero vector, and the identity transformation is the one that just leaves every vector alone, doesn't do anything to them. And these just correspond to the zero matrix, which, you know, if you do a zero matrix times a vector, you get the zero vector always. And if you do identity matrix, times a vector, you get that same vector back, right? Remember the identity matrix had ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So this is just the linear transformation version of those things. Okay, so that does it for a very brief introduction to linear transformations. And we'll start looking at things that we can do with linear transformations and making this analogy between linear transformations and matrices a bit more concrete in the next lecture.